Hogwarts Legacy boasts its ability to draw players into a new narrative that we have never read before in a book or seen on screen. The tagline for the game is literally, live the unwritten, meaning that the development team has spent countless hours creating a world that looks enough like a wizarding world that we're technically familiar with, but not so much that we already know where to go and how to do things. However, there is a dark history of the wizarding world that gives context to our adventure's beginning, so today, I want to visit that timeline of history to lay the scene and help us all prepare to dive into a world filled with conflict. Now we know relatively the history of wizards in the grand scheme of things. The Statute of Secrecy was founded that requires wizards to live under the radar from muggles. The Ministry of Magic was formed afterwards and basically it goes back and forth between trying to regulate the general revelation of wizard kind to muggles and actually regulating the wizards themselves. There are bad wizards versus good wizards, and there are a few inventions here and there, but we don't often talk about our relationships with other creatures and beings. It actually speaks volumes that we don't talk about them at all. Remember living the unwritten? Well, think of this video as speaking the unspoken. Now, it's history time. The first Goblin Rebellion recorded in the history of the wizarding community in Britain began in 1612. Yes, I know this is 278 years before Hogwarts Legacy, but stick with me, this is important. The reason this rebellion began in the first place was because goblins voiced the desire to own wands like their wizard counterparts. As we see in the trailer in State of Play, goblins have no problem wielding magic on their own. This wasn't about just wanting a wand, this was about equality. The Rebellion headquarters was located in Hogsmeade just a short distance from Hogwarts where our story will take place. Another rebellion in 1752 takes place, continuing the war that never really ended. As the tumultuous year progressed, werewolves even joined the goblins in that rebellion. There were two ministers of magic in one year. They both came into office and left office because they were doing such a poor job handling the rebellion. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't solve it until a third minister of magic eventually quashed the rebellion even though some of the battles continued for 10 years after. That minister, Hephaestus Gore, he had no sympathy for these rebels, uh, especially the werewolves, which led to new legislation regarding the werewolves' code of conduct and how they are allowed to live, which is pretty restrictive. This also impacts our story even though it happens a hundred years prior. It's clearly seen that wizarding prejudice continues to affect the relationships between wizard kind and those they deem lesser. Another great example of this is the fact that Gringotts was founded in 1474, but wizards never let the goblins fully control and run the famous bank until 1865, almost 400 years after its founding. And, coincidentally, just 25 years before our story begins. But more famously and cited in Deathly Hallows is the fact that the Sword of Gryffindor has been fought over for centuries because goblins believe that goblin made items to be owned by their maker, not by the person who just purchased it or currently owns it. Now, just to show this tension, like you can see it here in this exchange between Rookwood and Ranrock, they might be working toward a similar goal, but they absolutely do not trust each other. This dark and violent past will certainly come into play as we arrive at Hogwarts and continue outside the castle walls. Now, I throw all of this at you again, not to like overwhelm you in any sense or like throw a bunch of dates out, but it's more of a way to show you how fresh some of these tensions are going to be and how palpable they will be, especially as we relate to other creatures and NPCs in Hogwarts Legacy. It's very clear that we're going to have some choices to make about how we choose to interact with other NPCs and other creatures. It's clear that the developers chose 1890 as our setting for the game because it's a crucial point in time when these tensions have been building for hundreds of years amongst all these different groups of magical beings, and yet we have almost no recorded history of it. There's literally nothing, and that's the point, because we get to fill in those details and those blank pages of wizarding history. This powder keg of goblin oppression coupled with the already shaky relationships between wizard kind and pretty much everyone else will absolutely lead to some incredible storytelling and lore building events, especially when we look at the decision making and how that will affect our relationships with everyone and everything around us. Now this leads me to wonder, is this what Ranrock 
goblin antagonist in Hogwarts Legacy is fighting for? Could he be continuing the fight of his ancestors for equality, or does he desire something more sinister? Well, we're going to touch on that in the next video. So make sure you stick around, and if you did enjoy, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe before you go. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think Ranrock is up to, and if you like these types of history lessons. I love digging into wizarding lore. It's one of my favorite things to do. So please let me know what you guys think down below, and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, peace.